Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in the absolutely fantastic Lost Words Beyond the Page. Now this game was developed by Sketchbook Games, published by Modus Games and is available for £11.99 slash $14 dues $99 or alternatively just look for any sales in the future. Now this is an immersive and brilliant 2D platformer and we play as Izzy, a young girl writing, her, uh, writing in her diary, going through a very tough and personal time and creates this story in the world of Estoria. Not to be confused with the actual country of Estonia, of course. Uh, but we get to explore unique platforming sections, a vibrant world, excellent puzzles and stunning scenery. Now achievements and trophies wise it is not very difficult at all, we get one for completing each chapter, we have a few missable ones to miss out for but again very very easy. Uh, there are also quite a few where we have to collect a few certain things over different levels, i.e. black asterisks and fireflies, which by the way there are 120 of the fireflies that we need to collect. But more on that later and we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Otherwise, it's an easy 1,000 slash platinum and will take us around 3 to 4 hours. So, with that being said then, let us begin. Now, there are two... There are eight chapters and there's sort of two different... Bleh, gameplay mechanics, if you want, um, which we'll have a look now. Thank you, Granny. You give me present. I guarantee it's a sweater. All grands love knitting a sweater. That's just... There's nothing wrong with that. Tell you what, the older you get, the more you appreciate it, I promise. So this is the first bit of the gameplay uh, that we do. We basically have to go through a diary. Now, when the flap opens up on anywhere on a book, on the diary, that means we can just end it and finish it. Um, otherwise, it's obviously the left directional stick to move. And you see a little orb? You can move that with the right directional stick, which we will do, we'll be doing for the majority of the game. So there's the asterisk, a purple asterisk. It basically comes up with a little bit of extra writing. The purple, or pink, whatever that is, you don't need to collect all of them. It's only seven of the black ones we need to collect later on. But again, more on that later. So you press the A button to jump. Um, just keep going through the flappity flap flaps when they open up. So you can just go straight through the end. Um, Obviously, the more we get into the game, there'll be more puzzles and everything like that we need to do in order to complete said diary pages. Uh, like for now. So now you can move the little orb with the right directional stick. And then with any sort of cut out words like that, press the right trigger. And that'll sort of pick it up. And then press the right trigger again to uh, basically put it in place. And with that, we can now jump over. And jump over again. So like I said, and all these purple asterisks are basically just little bits of, of extra of the story. That's all. Um, you can collect them if you want, but we, we don't have to. Again, it's only the black ones later on. Ugh, god damn it. God damn cats, get the hell out of my... God damn it, cat. And this is why I am a dog person. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but cats don't write all over your shit. Although dogs can lick you. Stuff. Yeah, anyway, I'm thinking of the wrong thing right here. <laughs> so we're just going to move on, keep on moving up, jump over to the right side page, and stick yourself inside the flap. <laughs> that means two things. <laughs> anyway, so with the red um, sort of bookmark, you can't actually jump over, um, but that literally makes no difference. So we can just go down. And you can see what it says, I blew out the candles. You can pick that up again with the right directional stick and using the right um, trigger. Blow out all of the candles and then put it down somewhere on the page. Again, using the right trigger. If you don't put it down on the book like you've just seen, you fall straight through. So you actually have to place it down by pressing the right trigger again. Make sure it goes down. And then we can jump on. Which, obviously, I could really go ahead and take my own advice. So that would be nice. Third time's a charm, eh, buddy? Oh, <laughs> well, third time's a charm because I didn't even need the friggin' word. Nice. So, yeah, again, um, again, you can collect the purple asterisks if you want, or the pink, whatever the hell colour they are, but it really makes no difference. It is, like I said, just all part of the story, bits of extra writings. Um, but for now, we can literally just 
get our heads inside the flap. It's not as smelly and uh, it doesn't smell as much as inside these flaps, so happy with that. Well done. So for this page then, what you need to do is you see the words becoming a writer. Obviously, we can pick them up. Now, I actually go and grab the asterisks and use them as steps to grab them. But since the flap on the right hand side is open, you can literally just go straight there if you want to. Um, it's definitely worth grabbing the asterisks because, you know, the story is just... It, it really is phenomenal, and it, it's a it's a heart wrenching story, so it's definitely worth picking them up, you know, just to have a look at the story. But if you're just in it, uh, just to be able to fly through the game, then obviously you're more than welcome to just slam straight through the flaps. <laughs> I'm so sorry. There's going to be a couple of them. Yes. Gran always says. So on to this next page, what we need to do is put the words in the correct order, and it is a writer writes. So again, drag it with the right trigger, and put it in the correct order, a writer writes. And a little bit more dialogue will appear. A writer. And sorry, I also forget to mention, to progress the story a little bit more, you have to always step on the key words, which are always purple, right there. So as we just stepped on anything, that progresses the story, then we can finish the level. And by the way, of course a writer writes. A writer doesn't direct films, otherwise it would be called a director. Anyway, so yes, anytime you see any of these purple words, we are needing to step on them to be able to... Uh, progress the story, obviously um, with things like that then unlock, we can unlock gates, jump on, and then jump through Flappo, like El Flappo. Do the same on this page then, anytime you see any of the purple words, then we can step on them, grab the water can from the right, just place it on the left, that'll put the tree up, then we can jump up to the next dialogue, and step on the word better, and finish it now. So that's all this page is then, is the same sort of thing, you just um, step on all of the key words until the flap opens up, and then we can go head first inside there as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of the, you know, all of these diary entries are about, you know, sort of anywhere between 5 to 10 minutes long, they're not too bad though, they're not too hard, most of them are pretty straightforward. Fairy tales? Wait. We're getting somewhere. A fantasy story. So, how do I start my fantasy story? Once upon a time. Ugh. No one said this would be easy. Again. From the top. Not so far away. In the land of... Astoria. So here we go into the main thing, Astoria, not to be confused with the real life country of course of Estonia, as I've already said. Now, um, any, you can literally choose any name, it literally doesn't matter, I choose Grace because I like Grace, I think that's a very, very nice name. Um, but again, you can choose literally any name you want and there's a... a a lot of times like that, again, you can choose any colour as well. I choose red as it is my personal favourite colour. Um, but again, you can choose anything you want. All it affects is the dialogue. There's a, there's a lot of options through the game. And a lot of them do not really matter. And any ones that do, I'll obviously let you know. Because I am a good kid like that. Elder Ava. Everyone was very fond of Grace. Her heart was full of curiosity and compassion. The villagers agreed that no one was... Again, we can choose what we want here. I choose kind because, eh, well, I like kind. I also like smart and playful, but you can only pick one, so kind it is. Also, kind is the four first words of my favourite chocolate bar, Kinder Bueno. You can't say kind of bueno, it doesn't have the same ring to it, but you, you get what I mean. So now we can begin the story tidy. We've already started it, but we can start the Astoria story. The 
There lived a young girl named Grace. She was kind and loved taking care of the world around her. Suddenly, a faint speck of light floated down and began to buzz around Grace. Hello, little firefly. Did you come for my birthday? Oh, Elder Ava's gonna be so happy. Let's head back. The firefly shared Grace's excitement. I was also planning to make Elder Ava a fruit punch. And maybe we can find some more berries on the way back, firefly. Ah, it's Grace's birthday! Well, let's go collecting. So as we begin, we're going to move to the left immediately. A lot of this game would go to the right. Now, that's an apple that I collected, but it can be a book for you. So if it's a book or an apple, it doesn't matter. We'll still get the same thing anyway. So you fall to the right, and we grab the next one. Push this block out of the way with the B and left trigger button. Climb under, um, putting left and any other direction you want to go and collect the third one so like I said it can be a book for you it can be an apple makes no difference push the block again with the B and left directional stick climb up again using the A button and you should have now got the collectomania achievement that's the that is a missable achievement but it's a very hard one to miss so for now we'll just keep continuing to the right like I said we are going I would have already crapped my pants going down there like that and I would have fallen on my ass too but like I said, there's a lot of times we'll be going to the right, so yeah. Keep on going to the right, baby. And shark fins circling below. Phew! We made it, Firefly. Next, we'll see a vine. You can just jump on straight onto it and then go down again using the left directional stick. And then jump off using the left directional stick at the jump button. Before you... Yes, you go to the right. Keep on going. Again, down, and then to the right here, to crawl under. Now a gentle hug. It's nearly there, Firefly. Just one more little slide. Here we go! Every time she slides down like that, my whole butt caves in. I am literally a scaredy cat for that. <laughs> Shouldn't have told you that. Now I look like a pansy. But that's fine. So it's a nice, long, slow climb up on this elevator. We have a little gander out, take a look at the trees. It's all so beautiful. Elder Ava a hug. She'd be so proud that her firefly came. Look, firefly. Home. The warm lights and enticing smells of Elder Ava's hut welcomed her. Elder Ava! So this is the part where we're going to learn about our main sort of power and game mechanic throughout the game. Uh, what, we, what we have is like a magic book full of words. And it'll be rise, break, etc. And we can use those words to um, interact with things in the real world or the fake world. So as you can see there, go ahead and press the right trigger, interact with the rise button. Drag it down underneath and that will make the treasure chest rise. And Elder Ava will get out something. I really hope it is not a sexy outfit because Elder Ava, I'm sorry, I'm not wanting to see that on you. Oh, it's a book. Oh, thank God for that. Hopefully not full of any Elder Ava's pictures, as it were. <laughs> so, left trigger, that is the one that opens the book. And then again, you use the right directional stick and the right trigger to move the orb onto it and to use the words. Sometimes with the dialogue as well, you are able to just mash it with the A button. So that's what I do with a lot, or a lot of dialogue through the game. I just mash the A button just to get through it so we can move on quicker. Again, this doesn't make... Any difference, you can pick what you want. I pick emerald because emeralds are pretty fit. Am I right? 
Hey, don't tell me what to do, bro. I'm so proud of you, Grace. So then, let us begin to use our magic. We can't use it for any mischief or anything like that, which would have been hilarious through the game if we could have done that. But we can um, use the rise button to get stuff out of our way. So again, left trigger to open the book, right directional stick and right trigger. Put it underneath whatever's blocking your way, these uh, pa uh, bits of wood, then we can move past. Which, it's, it's a bit annoying for the other <laughs> villagers, to be honest, because now they've got to pick all that up. But... That's fine. I'm Grace. I'm blonde and I'm cute. Nobody can mess with that. So up the elevator we go. Oh, miss. go on. She looked over her bustling treetop village. I heard you had a bit of leaf mold. This was all she knew. Yeah, Elder Bassus gave me a poultice. Did it work? Cleared it right. And off. it was home. Looks better than ever. Smell that. That's the scent of paradise. I can always use more paradise. I'll take ten. But inside, she was still curious. Hey, Grace! Happy birthday! No, you can't have a magic book. Good to see you, Grace. But Grace has one. Well, that's different. She's special. But you say I'm special. Careful, careful. No need to rush. About the world that lay beyond. Oh my god, look how popular I am. <laughs> it is what I imagine her voice would really sound like. Instead, it's a very cute English accent, which I love throughout the game. Fantastic voice acting through the game. So, going to the right here, we're going to find a bunch of uh, sort of pallets, woods that we can jump up. And again, left trigger, um, interact with the rise button, with the right trigger, of course, and then put it underneath the bits of wood. That rises up, we can now jump to the next bit, onto the right, and keep on going. Again, we're going to need the rise to open up the gate, so as soon as the cutscene's over, left trigger, get the book out, right trigger, excuse me, right trigger on the word rise, put it underneath the door, and that'll get us our way through. Grace couldn't wait to see the fireflies. Soon they'd bless her as new village guardian. What's being guardian going to be like, Firefly? I hope. So hoppity hop hop like a quick bunny rabbit. And then what we can what we need to do is swing across to the other side. There's not that many times you have to do this through the game. Um, but just sort of put yourself on the bottom and then just uh, swing left and right with the direction left the directional stick Give yourself a bit of momentum and fly baby fly Grace crawled through the dank dark tunnel It didn't feel like being hugged at all. So here we need to make a couple of rocks rise until they are absolutely stiff and at their most hardest at the very top and their most biggest. So get the word rise and wait until you're actually on the rock before you use the word rise to put it underneath. And then that rock will become solid and rise. <laughs> and then just jump down. I'm not saying anything else. Uh, so here's another missable achievement then. Jump onto the bell. Again, sort of go down until you're at the bottom and then give yourself a little swing. Keep going until music keeps playing and the achievement here ye here ye bells out. There it is. And then we can move on. Home to the fireflies, whose ancient energy kept the village safe from harm. Go on. Show them what you can do. That's it! They're accepting their new guardian. At last, I can get a lion. Glowing light surrounded her. 
a timeless energy that birthed stars and forged suns. Now she was part of it forever. And so Grace became the new Firefly Guardian, but her biggest adventure was yet to come. Hello, Journal. This time of the year. And so ends chapter one then. So we've got the base mechanics of the game down now in terms of the journal and the sort of main game. Drag the work dark down to the sun and then we can move it on. Press the right trigger in the gap and that will open up the flap we can dive head first into. I've never actually... So this is another easy one then. We're going to have to step on the keywords. Firefly and journal there. You can get again the asterisk if you want. And then you'll see the word glowing, so we can take that with the right trigger and then just put them all over the fireflies to end this page. On holiday in Wales, Gran and I would go to the beach and look up at the stars. But one night, we looked down instead. The stars were shining in the water. It was like the sky got flipped upside down. Now there will be some pages I don't talk on only because it's quite obvious. So as soon as we um, go over, we're going to wait for some pebbles and we need to actually jump on them. Jump on them all the way down, they'll light up, and the page will end. So yeah, like I said, I won't talk through every single page, because sometimes it's it's literally as obvious as just stepping on the key words. Glowed beneath our toes. Gran said it was called... So as soon as you stand on the word bioluminescence, it's going to start swaying us to the right a little bit. Wait until the next dialogue appears to the right of you. And then what you need to do is jump by the tide, jump on by the tide, and then jump through El Flapo. I knew it was just little creatures. So jump on the word felt, and then the word magic will appear. All we need to do is just slam that around the page. Again, right trigger to pick it up, and then slam it around the page until El Flapo opens up. I got up very early. The next morning. So once we've stood on the word morning, a jar is going to appear here when we stand on that from the kitchen. All we need to do is actually push that off into the water. So jump to the other side of it, then press the B button and left trigger button. There we go. Left trigger, the left stick. Push it into the water. Next page begins. That evening, I was so excited. Same sort of thing with this page then, as soon as you stand on the keyword, a jar will appear, just push it over to the nightstand with the clock, or the desk, or whatever the hell you want to call it, from whatever country you're from, and El Flapo appears to jump through again. I like the nickname El Flapo, I don't know why. But it didn't glow. I was devastated. I showed Gran the jar. She laughed. So for this one, it's can't put a cork in nature. So you've got to put it in the correct uh, correct order. You can always tell because... I can't put a cork in nature, nah man. But you can always tell um, because the words, the, the missing words are actually the same sort of size as it. So if it's a small word, it'll be a small piece missing. So again, fairly obvious, but maybe one that you could potentially miss. Doesn't make a difference if you get it wrong. Anyway, I don't believe... So, with all this then, all you've got to do is just put all the keywords inside the fish tank until all the picture appears and El Flapo appears. Pebbles. Sand. Water. Glass stones. Company. Lights. We took pictures for Gran's photo album. 
Now we can stand on the keyword again. What we have to do is grab the word remember, again with the right trigger, and then just put it all over the picture there until the picture appears. Uh, Izzy's going to say some more dialogue, and then we're going to have to do it with a couple of more pictures. Come on, Izzy, speak. Speak, honey. Speak to me. Ah, there we go. So now we can get remember. Do it on the next couple of pictures until the old flappo beanie opens. How happy we were when we had it all set. Just needs time to develop, said Graham. After six days, the algae was ready. So just stand on the keyword and we're going to get um, the word finger. Now we can put our fingers right inside the fish tank. And see if we can get a cheeky nibble out of it. But slam it all around. Swill your fingers all around inside the uh, wet cave right there. Or the wet thing. And then we can jump through the flap. I'm not saying a word. It's all on you. <laughs> right, so next, I'm on the keyword again. She's got a call. She has to leave now. It sounded really bad. I have... A weird... Feeling in my stomach. Something. Get ready to jump and then get ready to fall. I don't want to believe it. Please, her. Grace woke from a hazy, distant dream. Something unnatural had stirred her from slumber. Ugh. What's that noise? Eldery! So here we are then, the second part of the main game, or the second chapter. We're going to head to the right, go outside. We're going to speak to uh, Mr. Aver. And actually what we're going to do is just uh, keep flying to the right. So like I said, any dialogue, I'm going to just keep on slamming through. Saves a little bit of time, that's all. But just keep heading to the right for now. As she hurried past the crackling rooftops, her concern grew. Hey, Grace. So as is the norm in video games, our village is on fire, the elevator's broken, so we need to use the word rise. That will make your wood rise. <laughs> uh, do you keep going all the way to the top? And why is it... There's always a tragedy happening in every game. Why, why is that a thing? Please tell me. She needed to get to the fireflies. She needed to keep everyone safe. Here's a chance for a missable achievement as well. Um, we can just walk past this guy, but do not. What we're going to do is rise the wood from underneath him, or on top of him rather. He's going to get up. Too much wood on him, and that will get us the achievement, a friend in need. So that's the only missable achievement in this chapter, or a friend indeed, sorry. So we can just keep continuing to the right for now. But what we're going to do now is get our second keyword, the word repair. So again, just drag it. When it was up the top there, just drag it and get the word repair. It doesn't repair everything, so you've got to go bit by bit. It doesn't do it all at once, so you've got to do it, like I said, bit by bit. And then you can continue over. Now repair all of this the, with a bit of wood. We're going to jump on the wood and make our wood rise again. I'm sorry, it's just too easy. I'm so sorry. Don't hate me for it, please. So, jump to the right and keep going for the time being. A terrifying noise echoed from beyond the village gate. Grace rushed out to meet it. Soon she would prove herself as the new village guardian. I can do this. 
Right, Firefly? Right? But she could not deny the creeping terror. By the way, if you do end up dying, like you're going to see me doing here, hello. Uh, it doesn't matter because the checkpoint is extremely helpful and very good in this game. You literally start off just where you began. So, not too bad. But swing yourself across and keep on going. That was scary. This tree did not comfort her. It was as scared as she was. With nobody around. So we're gonna get a new keyword. We can only use this once through the game. Extinguish the fire. Wow, these keywords just happen at the most opportune times. It's fantastic. Almost like magic, hmm? But as soon as the cutscene's over, onwards we go. A strange blaze crackled ahead. Is that fire? So now we've made all our wood rise, now we're gonna make our hard rock rise. Again, like I said, jump on the rock before you um, end up using the rise button, because it just it it literally takes like two seconds where it might mess you up a bit. But, as usual, keep continuing to the right. But what we're going to need to be doing is repairing the bell. So again, when she shuts her yapper, we're going to repair the bell. There it is. And now we can swing across it. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean shut your yapper. I do. I really did like her voice throughout the entire game. No, I'm sorry, Grace. Please be here, please be here. Soon, the dreadful realization dawned on Grace. The fireflies were gone. Again, pick any uh, dialogue option you want here. All it does is change a few of the words. But I like fireflies, so that's what I'm going with. Elder Ava! I know. Don't. Go, and may the love of this village guide you, always. My child, you must save the lives of everyone, which is, again, the norm for video games. So we're going to keep on heading to the right for the time being. <laughs> Why is it always up to the least likely one to save the day? Well done. But she would not be stopped. This was further than she'd ever been before and yet it was exhilarating wondrous and terrifying fear was at her side and hope in her heart but things were about to get worse much Is that much a worse dragon? it's big i could have killed that dragon once but then I took an arrow to the knee. So for this next bit, uh, we're going to need to be repairing these pillars. So don't actually jump on them like I do. If you do end up falling, like I said, you're just going to start here again anyway. So give them a little repair and then hoppity hop hop your way through. Not for giant monsters. She would make it answer to her. No matter what. She would catch the dragon. No, wait! Time to get our Assassin's Creed style off. Leap! The leap of faith! No! 
And then, of course, in the real world, you'll break your neck and die, probably. Not like Assassin's Creed, where there's always a nice little hay bale for us. So that's the end of Chapter 2. Now when we begin this chapter and the next part of the game, uh, this is where we're going to be getting a lot of the collectibles, the fireflies. Usually 20 now in each level. But for now, we've got another 10 minutes of journal entries. So just stand on the keywords and go through El Flapo Beanie. It took a while to find the right room. Dad, let me open the door. So stand on the keyword door, then we can get the word open there and use it on the doors to open the doors. Obviously. <laughs> I thought that was obvious by now. It wasn't to me first, I've got to be honest. But we, we won't say anything about that. <laughs> Gran has a big, cosy bed at home. Nothing like the hospital one she was in. Lying in there. She looked so small. I don't remember her being that small. Grand's eyes were open. So for this next page then, stand on the um, keyword. Then you need to grab the microscope and use it on the right hand side to find three keywords there. And then choose the appropriate keyword in the missing box to the left. So the first one then is find. And you can tell which one you've got to do because the word find actually has the black writing on it. Whereas the others are sort of greyed out. So that one again is fairly obvious when you know what you're doing there. So do the same thing again. Grab the microscope from the right hand side. Find the two words uh, or the three words. And you can see the one, the one with black writing then speak. Again, of course, the other two greyed out will not work. It was caused by the stroke. She's usually so talkative. But now, she kept stopping. Mid-sentence, as if all the words she could find were just... out of reach. I could see it really frustrating her. So yeah, I, again, as you can tell, I'll only speak on these pages when we've got sort of something to do other than just jumping on the keywords. So we, we jump on the keyword here, jump on the next keyword at the bottom, and then we drag the mask over to Gran. And then the words <laughs> Darth Gran are going to appear, so you need to drag that all the way on the right-hand side until the picture is... <laughs> Is a piano. That was that's a very clever writing. I like that. And if you don't laugh at that, then well, I'm sorry. You're soulless. Just joking, honey. That reminds me of Gran telling me how she took Mum to the cinema along. So we're gonna get the Star Wars theme. At the very, you know, like at the very beginning of the film. All we need to do then is just go from right to left. Just basically go, um, basically just going downwards. As you'll be able to see. So go to the right, go to the left, go to the right, go to the left. Right, left, 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 right, left. Until we get to the very bottom. On a battered video cassette, Gran would laugh at the robots and guess a funny smile. Whenever the scruffy looking smuggler showed up. We'd watch it until we could quote all the best lines. We laughed a lot. Once she gets out, we're going to watch them all over. So when we get to the bottom here and jump on the word together, you need to now jump off to the left and just keep doing a, a continuous loop. So jump to the left, wait for the right to sort of uh, fly up there. We're going to see the spaceship. Do not jump into the spaceship just yet. Instead, like I said, jump off to the left right now. I just keep doing a continuous loop until the achievement unlocks. It's a missable achievement, which, again, it's easy enough to get to this point, but you don't want to spend an extra five minutes getting there, do you? So, to infinity and beyond, it's, it's that's Toy Story rather than Star Wars, but that's okay, that's fine. <laughs> so we can now jump into the spaceship and go to the next page. And games again. So this is where we are going to get our first black asterisk. Remember the purple slash pink, whatever color they are, doesn't matter if you miss them, but the black ones we have to collect. There are seven to collect, and we need them all for an achievement. So, just follow where I go. He basically appears in the middle of the page. After about four or five of these purple slash pink ones, the black one appears in the middle of the page. So just do not forget to collect that one. Grand's a 
tough cookie. In video games. So it's going to be after this next asterisk. So collect that one and then make sure to be grabbing L Black Obini right here. There he is. So that should be one out of seven. And yeah, now we crash. <laughs> now we crash. I've never seen her cry before. She so to try and cheer our very, very sad um, mother up, what we need to do is make her a nice cup of brew. Now, you can make the brew in any way. You put the tea bag in first and then you do it whatever way you want to. I always thought this was normal, but apparently I'm the freak. I apparently I make tea the freak way. And what it is, I put the tea bag and I put the milk in first. But apparently, like, the majority of people put the water in first and then the milk. Now I feel like a freak. I always thought it was normal. Anyway, so yeah, just make the brew whatever way you want. Use the tea bag, use the milk, use the water <clears throat> the correct way. And then the flap will open. Give it to your mother. The flap will open. The, the flap on the page. And then we can move on. Mum said Gran was getting tired. I said she's getting better. So what we need to do now is step on the keyword and uh, just get off the word better there and then put it over to the left. Now that's all we'll be doing so you need to step on the keyword and then with that just drag that over to the opposite page. Very easy. Sleepy. Mum said Gran's going to... I said she's going to be fine. Everything is going to be fine. All you need okay then, so this is another very important page. We're going to be collecting another two of the black asterisks right here. So get yourself over to the left hand side. You can already see the first one. So there is number one for this page and there's going to be a second one in the same spot. So you can go ahead and grab the other asterisks if you want, but just make sure you, that you grab the two black asterisks that are on this page. There we go. And that will be three out of seven. Uh, we won't be trying to grab them now for a little while, so breathe a sigh of relief, even though it's not that difficult to get. Mum as well. They'll enjoy reading it. I hope it helps. What else can I do? I just need to finish my story. So, where were we? After the dragon attacked the village, Grace set out to find the fireflies, leaving Elder Ava and her village behind. Her journey took her to... a vast desert. With a guardian. So again, after we jump on all of the keywords, we're going to get a little godlike creature called the Jinn appears. Ah, uh, but once again, use whatever dialogue option you want. Sacred. Grace had pursued the dragon far, far from home. So here we are then, back into the other part of the game, and now this is where we're going to start collecting all the fireflies. There's usually 20 in each chapter, apart from chapter 8, the last one, which has 40. But generally they are not that hard to miss, only a couple in later levels. Uh, so the first one, as you can see, they're just literally little white balls of light. And you'll see how many collect in the corner there. So we've already got 1 out of 20. And you'll see this second one here, just above us. So what we need to do is grab this box, pull it to the left a little, and then jump up. That's 2 out of 20. Safe now. Where did this wind suddenly come from? There was something very unnatural about it. Jesus Christ, this Grace girl has no fear.
So jump on the rock, it's very small at the minute, but use the rise option to get him to maximum length. And then we can continue on to the right. Very windy, a bit dusty there. So when the wind stops, now we're able to jump down, but before going to the right, head to the left and you'll see our third out of 20 fireflies. You bloody moody bastard. Get, he, he does not like us. For whatever reason. So now we are going to get the break option. Which we will be using a lot throughout the game. Again drag it with the right trigger. And you just put it on. Blocks break. Job's done. But that is in our book for good. So now we can just continue moving to the right. Why don't you love me? I just want to be loved. But now we can use the break option again. So again, left trigger, get your magic book out. Right trigger to get the word break and then just go through all of the blocks underneath. This is also incidentally where our next firefly is going to be. <laughs> I really wish uh, Grace had just said, remember the meme? Surprise, mother -ugger. I really wish you'd have said that. That would have been hilarious. But of course, it's not that type of game. So of course not. Jump down. And he's going to be like, bruh, get the hell out of my face. Go away. Go away. I can't. I'm in love with you. How many times have we, as guys or girls, all heard that story? Go away. I can't. Yeah, anyway. We're going to break all the blocks that's underneath us. And we're going to have to continue heading down. So again, just grab the break word with you. And keep on heading down, Ski. Now, usually you would have broken your butt bone by then, but of course, again, video games, perfect. Perfect logic for video games. So continue to the right for the time being. Easily scared of. Easily scared? And again, get out the word break. Break all of the blocks. And the firefly, we're going to get our next fly, fi firefly, it's up on the left top corner there, so grab that. And we can continue heading to the right now. Uh, now there's going to be like this sort of sand pit, so we need to break this, jump on top of it, and then wait until the sand rises us to the top. But of course, do not keep the break, the word break on it, because it'll break it. So for some reason, this is exactly what I do right now. So yeah, try try not to do that. Just keep the word break out of the way and continue heading to the right. Below the rolling dunes. I wonder what Right, same sort of thing, only this time we'll be going up on the block to the right there. So we need to break all of this uh, big sand pillar thing. Break it all, break it all, go to the other side. And then just drag the block onto the sandfall and climb on top and wait until you're at the top. So we're going to get our next firefly. This should be number, what, 6 out of 20. And then we need to repair this next pillar. I tell you what, if I had these magic, if I had this bit of magic, I would be an absolute millionaire by now. Something's broke, I've got a repair word right here, I'll fix everything, mate. Now we need to rise this pillar out of the way. A long forgotten chamber. The plants recoil. Now you see there's a firefly just above us, but we can't get it just yet, so we're going to rise this pillar. And then there's a statue here that we're going to repair, and it's going to give us a new word. Silencio. The silence of the ages filled the air. So what we can do with silence, you see the little sort of aura around it, the sort of bubble, if you will. As long as we put our main character Grace inside the bubble as we walk, 
then those plants that sort of stummed up earlier will now not stum up and then we can climb on it. So it's, it's sort of awkward to get it right because you need to be moving both these words silence and grace at the same time. But once you can do that, press the A button to climb up. And again, you've got to be moving the word silence as well. That's going to get us our next uh, firefly. And again, just keep on going because the minute the, the word silence goes away and you're out of that bubble, then it'll uh, clam up. Jump to the left then and that's that bit done. Now we can use the word break, and we're going to break the rock just above us. Try to get too close to the edge, because you get your head knocked in. And that'll probably pinch a little bit. And we got a couple of fireflies to get the first one there. On the ground, that's 8 out of 20. And what we need to do now is use the word rise, and rise up the sand. Now don't worry, you can't die. But what you need to do is quickly go to the left, grab the next firefly. Right, meow. Oops. Anyway, I uh, don't know why you've done that. Go to the right, and you're going to see the next one on the right, and that should be it for this little section before we finally head back to the world surface. Sit down to Grace. It didn't listen. I need to find it. Sacred, I said. No one listens to me anymore. Ah, you. Why won't you return my calls and love me? This will shut him up. We need to get the word silence. And then we need to actually use it on him. And then he shuts up. It's just... It's brilliant. Women are fantastic at that, by the way. Tell us to, tell a man to shut up and bam, they'll do it. No problem. That's why women are generally better than men, to be fair. So, just keep following old Jin head right here. But the desert guardian would not let it rest. So for this next bit, he's going to shove blocks up from the ground, but do not break them yet. We're going to jump over them, first of all, because there's going to be a firefly that we need to be grabbing. So if you break them, then you will not be able to get them. So just keep on jumping up. Come on, Jinhead. Do me a solid, mucker. There we go. So there's a firefly. It can be very easily missable within the distance, but again, make sure not to break them. Just jump until we get firefly 11, and then keep moving on. I need, don't you get a read? That's it. So long. Brr, I think you're gonna spew at that. Because I know I would at a roller coaster ride like that. I'm, so, I'm a baby. I am a baby. Desolate place. Grace wondered. Why would. So we need to get our man management repair skills out. So we can get the word repair, repair the pillar, and keep walking through. It's kind of like that song Eat, Sleep, Rave, Repeat, except it's Rise, Rise, Walk, Repair, Walk, Break. Walk, repeat, repeat, repair, break, walk, break. And that's what we're doing here. We're breaking this rather than repairing it. Now, before you jump off the cliff, make sure to grab Firefly number 12 here. If you do end up missing it, quickly dashboard uh, the game and go back into it before heading into this building here. That way you should start just before it and you're able to grab it. To rest. Grace's thoughts drifted to the people that once had lived here. She would... Philosophers. A distant roar roused Grace from her thoughts. I'll catch you yet. So once we're out, we're going to continue heading to the right, but before we break this pillar right here, just keep heading past it. Going down underneath, there is a missable firefly to grab. After we break these rocks, though, sometimes you'll need to break them twice, but there it is. That's firefly number 13. 
And then what we could do is break this rock underneath the pillar and you can already see Firefly number 14. Try not to get caught underneath it because you will die like a big pizza pie. But uh, one thing though, if you do already collect a collectible and you die, that collectible stays collected. So you can uh, don't have to collect that collectible again, the collectible stays collected, so that's fine. Now break the pillars and just keep on moving on. <laughs> Pondering life's mysteries. Fall before me. But behind Grace, a grumpy monk. So no need to stop for anything. You literally just keep on walking to the right, and we're going to come to like a little small tunnel with our next firefly in it. Very unmissable, this one though. The Desert Guardian was frantically looking for Grace. Stop hiding from me! He would surely find her eventually. Wouldn't he? Easy! Now we've got a new keyword we can learn, the word hope. Again, this only appears in this chapter, I believe, for the next part of this light. Uh, where it basically just gives us a tiny little bit of light, which is always nice, because it's shit scary in the dark. Especially when you're in an unknown cave with lots of creepy stuff. So head down, keep going to the right for now. Anyway, it's going to be our next missable firefly. There it is. So again, a lot of these are very missable if you don't explore every nook and cranny. Head back to the left and then hop back onto the ledge that we just came off. And there it is. And this time we can actually hop to the right. So we can keep going to the right here. So now we need to get our steroid strength out, or our magic book out, and get the word break. Break, break these rocks. Now we need to get the word silence out, because we need to be climbing up that... I don't know, I guess it's the a creature's tongue, I suppose? Unless it's something else? Hmm, weird. So use silence, and obviously keep her going with you, and that should be fine. But I'm not sure if... You walk in without silence makes a difference at this point. But anyway, we've got Firefly number 17 out of 20, so we can jump down. So before hopping up onto this pillar and doing the rise, just jump over it to the right and we're going to get our next missable firefly. And now we can rise our rock to the top. So we've only got two more fireflies. You should have only have two more fireflies to collect in this section. By the way, I'm going to put a um, collectible firefly timestamp for absolutely everything in the comments below. So if you are missing one, you can just have a look at each individual one in case... You are wondering. But we are almost done with the chapter actually now, so go to the right and break this block to go down it. Oh, the old days. So little left. Best forgotten. Look, whatever it is you don't want me to see, I'm sure we can... No, 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 no. You cannot go further. Are you back? How can I get him to listen? Would she break the Jin statue? 
Uh, when we can re-control <laughs> re -control Gracie, head straight up to the left on the vine, and you're going to see Firefly number 19. And then Firefly number 20 is going to be, as you can see, bottom right-hand corner. But we actually need to break the piece of wood here. So don't go all the way to the right and repair the statue. Do not repair the statue just yet. Break this little bit of wood. Head down, grab this last missable firefly, and then you can go ahead and repair the statue. And basically, we are coming to the end of chapter three. So, wasn't that interesting, kids? You, you read? You want? I don't mind. Every. <gasps> Again, like I said, I always be, I'm always smashing a button on any bit of dialogue just to see if we can smash through it. Uh, but actually, we've got a little bit left to do, so we can rise ourselves up, head to the right, and also get your silence out because we need to be going up one of those creatures' tongues. I'm assuming that he likes it, which. I don't know, you're pulling on a long thing. That's anyone like that. That is... What was that? Softly, my friend. Knowledge will be yours in time. Use it more wisely than I did. Fall softly, my friend. I'd prefer it if you tried and rescued me, but hey, what do I know? I'm just about to fall to death. That's cute, that's cute. Anyway, we are on that to chapter four, and it's uh, more of the same sort of stuff here. So we've got about sort of five to ten minutes of going through um, our little diary right here. So again, we'll just be jumping all of the key words, all the purple ones. So what you need to do now is just drag the torch from the left to the right-hand page, burning your homework, which I wish I'd have known that that was possible many, many years ago. <laughs> Vikings are the best. They're tall. And strong. They love conquering. And fire! Vikings are basically all kinds of awesome. I could really use some awesome right now. I got so for this next page then what we need to do is just grab the word remember and rub it all over these four empty uh, sort of photographs. Get a picture up, a bit of dialogue is going to happen and then we can go head first through the flaps again. Every time I close my eyes, I see her in that horrible bed. We're visiting the hospital later today. When we arrived, Gran was asleep. Her skin looked so thin, almost see-through like tissue paper. She was grand shaped, but empty. I mean, that's silly, right, Journal? It's just grand, but somehow it isn't. It's not her! She's 
She woke up after a few minutes, but it didn't seem like she knew who we were. Why? Why is this happening? Why her? It isn't fair. Why, Journal? Gran still can't speak properly. It's so cruel. She can't tell us anything. Like what she wants to eat. Or how she feels. And what's worse, everyone pretends they're having a real conversation with her. But they're not! You're doing fine, Barbara, the doctor said to her. You just need some time. Hospitals should make you better! She's so ill now! Nurse said it was dinner. Mum had ordered Gran soup and a jacket potato. So obviously the last few pages have just been jumping on the keywords, that's obviously why I haven't been speaking, and to give you guys a little break from this voice. Um, but th this page again, it's, it's easy enough, these uh, spoon, fork and knife sort of act as a seesaw, so you need to sort of jump up, give yourself a good bit of momentum, and basically just get up until you can go through El Flapo. Now this page is one of my favourites throughout the whole game because who the hell orders a mushroom soup? Who in the goddamn hell orders mushroom soup? Doesn't matter who you are, you can be vegan, you can be non-vegan. Mushroom soup is one of nature's most sickening things and this was my most favourite page because we get to push all of the mushrooms off. So that is exactly what we got to do. Four mushrooms, push them off the edge, just, just spit in the face of every mushroom. No offence to any uh, uh, mushrooms watching, or something. <clears throat> I reminded Mum about the mushrooms. She got that look, and banged the spoon against the bowl. There was lip passing, but... Looking at Gran, I had to help her. I still had some loose change. So, so for this one, all we got to do is grab the coins on the right hand side here. We're going to jump down, step on the vending word vending machine, and then jump up. And that will get rid of our three pounds. Three pounds for an egg sandwich, mine. That is a rip-off, but it's what I don't expect anything less from goddamn hospitals. I couldn't help but grin. They didn't let me back in. Adult talk. Wait outside. That's what they said. So I waited on a bench until Mum came out the room. She said nothing. Just took me to the car. We didn't speak a single word. Not at the car park. Right then, so on the next page we're gonna get a missable achievement. You can just go straight to the end, to El Flapper, but what we're gonna do is, see this delicious pie? We're gonna push this off the um, edge. So just push the pie off and that will get us the uh, missable achievement for Pieception, which... Hey, look. <sighs> I know you're a bit upset right now, but there's no need to take it out on pie, okay? Never take it out on pie. I know you're upset. Don't take it out on pie. I still had the egg sandwich. It was all mushed up. Everything is all mushed up. mean mum doesn't care yeah right like pie is stupid <laughs> like pie is stupid 
Again, I know you're upset, but please, the pie has got nothing to do with this. Okay. So, anyway, we are coming up to the end. We are close now to continuing on with the story. So, we're just going to keep on jumping on the keywords and everything, as we've been doing normally. But the Jin's spell slowed her fall. Down and down she went, tumbling, helpless. Then and there, Grace started... Now again, any dialogue option you can choose here literally makes no difference. It's just the dialogue that gets a little bit different. Green! As Grace hurtled through the darkness, her helplessness no longer made her feel scared. It made her feel frustrated, angry. She wanted answers. Jin's magic gently released her into the unknown. Now where am I? So here we are then, continuing on with the main game. And the first thing we're going to do is break the left-hand side block right here. Because we're going to get our first already firefly. So you can break both of the rocks, but make sure to go to the left first. Grab your first firefly. Firefly? <laughs> firefly out of 20. And then continue on to the right ever so slightly. Make sure to do a little bit of crawling too. Just my luck. And Jump across and you're going to get another unmissable firefly. And grab that boy. And then what we need to do is break this rock right here again. So again, you may have to do it twice, by the way, for it to happen. Just in case you hadn't already noticed. And continue on to the right. What we need to do, break the stagmite, I think that's what it's called, stagmite at the top there, the big pointy rock. Jump across, grab the third firefly on your way. And then break this rock, and we're going to have to do the same now with this bit. Be careful not to go into the fire, because of course, fire hurts, fire can kill you. Wait until the fire disintegrates, dis disintegrates. Rise up this rock to get another firefly, wait for the fire to die out, and go across. So, we need to actually be careful with this one. The rocks at the top are going to fall down. So, there is a firefly. So, don't just continue running to the right. You can't actually grab it from the left here. We will just miss it. So, what you need to do is go slightly to the right. Wait until the first rock falls. Jump on it. And then head to the left and grab that one. And then what you can do then is just quickly keep running to the right. And... You should not be stabbed right in the head, which is always handy for continuing in video games. And in real life, apparently. I need to find whatever is causing this and stop it, or I'll be smushed. So after pushing the block down, we're going to use our word rise to rise our big massive rock out. And jump up, crawl down, and get another unmissable firefly. Grace realized she would soon face its maker. So get the word break out so you can break the rock on the right hand side to get out. And there's going to be another unmissable firefly on this floating rock on top of the lava. Now, lava, as in most video games, unless you are made of lava, don't fall in because you will die. That's... That should be pretty obvious. And this bit's just kind of a cutscene as we see an angry fire girl just lose her shit. I'm so sorry, jeez. But the giantess just <laughs> kept on pounding. Yeah, just ignore me. It's not like I might die over here. So before moving all the way to the right, we're going to head up these little bits of steps here. And we're going to get another firefly. 
And then what you need to do is obviously press left trigger, get your magic book out, and then break all these stalagmites, stagmites, slagmites, whatever the hell they're bloody called. And then we're going to just jump across, and there we go. So the fourth one then should break the fall. Lovely. Then what you need to do here, there is a missable firefly that we need to do. So we're going to use rise on this rock in the middle of the lava. And that will shoot it up after a couple of seconds. That will get number 9 out of 20. Then we can break the rock at the very top. And now we can just jump up and continue on. After rising our <laughs> rock up, of course. So be careful here, break the rock, but do not continue all the way to the right. We need to slowly jump down this little edge here. So don't jump. So what we need to do is just be very careful, fall down onto this next ledge. There we go. And now we need to break the rock that is in front of us because this uh, firefly is very missable. If you do end up missing it, quickly jump into the lava or reload the checkpoint so we can get back to this bit. Anyway, now you should be good. So now we can jump on the rock and start going across to the right, break the uh, just, all we're doing then is breaking all the rocks in front of us and then life goes on for a bit so once again we're going to whip out our rise and then just put it underneath when we come to a stop that's going to jump us up jump to the right to grab another firefly go down as you can see on the bottom right of the screen you, uh, there's another firefly, so we need to break the rock that is above us, chop that down, jump down, and there we can grab the firefly, rise yourself up when you've done that, and continue on to the right. was a that in real life would actually make you crap your pants if the floor was going to give way and you went down this big slide thing but it is fun so we are going to break the rocks and we're going to come to another big cutscene with fire lava angry girl now so we're going to jump on the first rock make this one rise from the ground jump to the second rock jump to the third make that rise jump to the fourth cutscene appears and boy does she look pissed <laughs> No, 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 no. What is Um I might have overdone this. Now I don't want to seem a bit thing here, but is this what all girls feel when they're on their, you know, uh, time of the month kind of thing? Do they just feel like turning into a big flame ball and beating the crap out of walls and stuff? Only because I've experienced it for myself, so I don't know if that's all women. Don't, don't tar me with the same brush here, I'm sorry for asking a question, okay? But is that what genuinely women feel like when they're, when they're tomming, as it were? Anyway, sorry, we're going to move on, we're just going to keep, <laughs> keep on going down... For the minute, we are going to deal with fiery um, Tom Girl right here in just a bit. Um, now we're going to get the word burn. Um, basically, we're going to burn this lava pit. So there it is. So make sure again with the right stick and right trigger to drag the word burn to the lava pit. And then you get a bit, bit of warmth, even though you've just got across lava and dealt with the Tom Girl kind of thing. Again, any dialogue option here literally makes no difference. We're basically talking about how Fiery Girl is alone because, uh, you know, nobody will want to touch you if you made a fire. Nobody will want to speak to you because you'll accidentally burn them. A bit tricky when you made a fire. 
Grace vowed to be more understanding. If they met again. But this is what the word burn can do. It can basically turn any bits of grass into little fireballs, which... Again, somehow always managed to come in handy. I wish this was happening in real life. It would take care of a lot of problems, but it doesn't. So these mushrooms here, they'll always have like a, like a fuse on dynamite. So mushrooms do come in handy sometimes, especially if they're the type of magic ones. Anyway, <laughs> so what we need to do then, anytime you see one of these fuses, we just need to um, put it on the sort of the base of the mushroom fuse there. But break this break the rock and then we're going to grab two fireflies right here sorry getting a bit behind there i was uh, but that should be now number 14 that you should be on you don't actually have to burn those but it's always worth doing so to the right this is where we get the beginning of the fuse to break mushrooms balls So this is a small section that we, uh, mainly you, may need to do again a couple of times. I think I had to redo it three times, purely because of the fireflies that we need to get. I think there are four in this section. Um, so obviously crouch down here. And, and basically if you do die, you just restart this little section again. So jump up, grab this uh, firefly. This isn't the one that causes any problems. We jump down, but it is going to be the next one. So you'll see the pretty much unmissable one there. And then what you need to do then is just quickly, as soon as you go down, quickly jump to the left. Um, I obviously took too long there, so I grab it anyway, but I do end up dying. I'll keep this in just so you know uh, where we're at and where we begin again. But that's what you're supposed to do there. Jump down and quickly go to the left and then carry on. Instead of being slow poke McGee like I was right here. So you start at the beginning again, and there's going to be one more firefly that we need to um, pick up. But this platform in section is easy, it's still not so bad. Uh, so don't worry about you dying over nothing, basically. Burning river went faster. And obviously, as you can see, any collectibles that you collect, even if you die, they stay collected. So it is this next one. It's a very easy one, but still, somehow I managed to balls this up. So make sure to grab this one. Um, so again, I, I did edit that bit out some, as you could probably tell. Um, but yeah, just make sure to grab that one. That should be the fourth one out of this section. Very easy to jump up. Somehow I jumped left into lava. Just stupid of me. And then you've got the fifth one of this section, the unmissable one right at the very end. That is 20 out of 20. Now we're going to be doing a little running section because we've got Flame Girl here again. She is looking a little pissed. You again. She isn't listening. Run, Grace. So that's what we're doing then. As soon as we can start, run to the right and just don't just keep on just keep on running. Don't stop for anything. There's nothing left to collect, so just keep on running. Again, very easy platforming section. But just run, Gracie, run. I mean forest. Debris was flying everywhere.
freedom. left. It brought a change. You did it again! Lump, I... And then for some reason, after seeing a little bit of sunlight, she stops being pissed off and then turns into this cute little flame star who Grace calls Lump, which I find I find that's a very personal attack on lumpy people such as myself, but that's okay. I don't mind. I don't really care because it's just a joke. Uh, we're going to burn this. Uh, not long left to go with the level now. We're going to do a little bit of right hooking and then we're free to go. And Lump is goddamn cute. And the voice on Lump is cute as shit as well. Love it. Lump! You coming? Lump likes Grace. Hello, Journal. Ah, there we go, so we didn't actually have to do anything else. Moving to the right, we are back into the journal, and we've begun chapter 5 out of 8. Uh, so yeah, again, it's just the same sort of thing as we've been doing. Just jump on the keywords for now, and I'll be back if there are any little puzzles that we got to do. Now he mostly sits around, watching the telly. I don't think Gran would enjoy that. Right, so for the next page, when we get through El Flapo right here, it's a bit small, that Flapo, but that's good. Right, so what we need to do is do another thing of what Gran used to say. So put the words in the correct order. Again, very easy. Gran always says, give the world your kindness and it will return it threefold. So give the world your kindness and it will return it threefold. What about fourfold? I prefer fivefold myself. Give the world your kindness, and it will return it threefold. The more positive energy and kindness you give the world, the more you get back. When Mr. Parry's lawn got too high. So for this one, we got to do some work. Grab the word cut, cut the grass, and that's it. Then there's going to be some cake on the right hand side. We've got to jump up, jump on the keywords, stick your head through the L Flappo beanie again. She even does the unthinkable. She changed Ben's smelly nappies. We could do with kindness right now. Someone better step up. So when we stand on the word me, um, the next words on the right hand page are going to start going up. So you can go on each next bit of dialogue to grab the asterisks here. Or you can just keep going up. I grabbed them anyway because, you know, why the hell not? Mr. Parry's lawn. Tidying my room. Bringing order to chaos. So for this page then, what we need to do is a little bit of tidying up. We need to uh, go down into the next keyword there. Grab the word tidying and then just slam it all around the room. On the cat, on the pillows, on absolutely everything. Until the flappo beanie on the right opens up. There we go. And we should be good to go. Easy one again. And then I did so this page has another missable achievement then uh, step on the word washing 
and then what we need to do we need to basically put all the dishes into the sink and then grab another word so here we go grab the word gather get everything cups plates cutlery make sure to grab absolutely everything the word clean will appear so now we can grab the word clean and then just put them all on the dishes again. Keep going until they are all on the right hand side on the dryer. And that is where the achievement will unlock. And the flap will beanie can open. Thus moving on to the next page. It's a miracle. Then he bowed at my feet. He's such a complete numpty head. But it made mum laugh. And when we got to the hospital later, Gran was sitting in a chair and looking out the window. She was smiling. So all the things I've been doing have been working. I just have to do more. There was kale for tea, which is a kind of vegetable torture. But I told myself... So grab the word torture, sort of put it in the middle so we can jump up to the right hand side, jump on the next keyword, go to the bottom, and then what we need to do is actually eat. Is actually eat kale. And you don't have to do anything with the word torture, you've actually just got to um, go on each bit of the deliciousness, of course, that is kale, because, you know, who who doesn't want a KFC or, you know, something delicious instead? Who Who wants a bucket of kale for tea? Oh, me please, delicious. Anyway, that's all you gotta do. Collect the kale and move on to the next page before you spew. Okay, kale's not bad with lasagna, I suppose. on fire today I ran up the stairs two at a time just to top things up Pinky was very impressed and slept on my feet all night hello again journal I couldn't sleep I guess I felt a bit silly I mean, who cares if I eat my kale? Well, Dad, maybe? But does any of this really make a difference? It's just, if there's a sliver of a chance, it actually does. I want to believe in it. I mean, to be fair, if somebody's going through a personal tragedy, um, eating kale is definitely not going to make you feel any better. Uh, it's n nothing can prepare the heartbreak for it anyway, but eating kale just... You might as well just close my throat right now, because uh, nothing's ever going to taste the same again. Anyway, keep jumping on the word please, and we're going to go to the next page. Please, please, make Gran well. Sarah's family are pretty religious. Not like mum and dad. I don't know that much about religion, actually. I like the stories, especially the one about the Ark and rescuing all the animals. Gran was raised Catholic, but I never really heard her talk about God. Make Gran well. Well, maybe you should give her some of that kale. Maybe that'll come in handy. 
Not. Anyway, uh, what we need to do now is clean up all the sort of blue, inky, liquidy crap off the bottom of the cake. So grab the word on the left-hand side there. And just get rid of it all. That will open up the flap for us. to pay for them. I asked her once. She said, if there is a god, they're in our actions. Another very easy one. All we'd be doing on the left hand side, we're just going up grabbing all of the hearts, which is very cute. Very, very cute. Seems right to me. So what should I do? I'm going to bring in my story next time we go to the hospital. I can read it to her. I think she'd like that. Maybe if I do a really good job, she can come home in time for Ben's birthday. But first, I need to get on with the story. Having escaped the flaming caves, Lump and Grace ventured into... a tenebrous forest. Writing Lump is going to be fun. But if she's not so angry anymore, she might need another character flaw. Maybe... Uncontrollable cravings for... Next dialogue options, once again, do not matter. Pick what you want and be happy with it. Sweet fruit. Gentle sunlight streamed across their faces. Sun! I missed you. Oh, Skyfire is warm. Like love! That's the dragon! We've got to follow! So here we are then, once again, starting the main game. Happy, happy sunlight. Lumpy ass is happy as are we. So we're just going to keep on jumping, happily skip it to the right for now, until we get into the forest and another cutscene happens. But just keep going to the right for now. Grey forest, dark, foreboding. Grace didn't care. Oh. So when we get onto this branch right here, you could probably just see the firefly in the bottom left hand corner. So break the end of this log. And then what you can do then is rise, uh, repair it. Sorry, not rise it up, but repair that. Then we can go to the left, grab the first firefly. And then remember to go all the way to the right. Don't be under the log when you break it again, because obviously that will kill you. Not that it makes too much of a difference, luckily. But for now, anyway, we're just going to be crawling underneath. And we're going to be getting Firefly number two. So now we can break this log. Again, remember not to stand in the middle, because you will die a violent, sad death. Ah, nobody wants that. Keep on going to the right for a minute. There. And your minute's up. Uh, so go, don't go all the way to the right yet. We're going to break this log again. Stand in the middle of it. Grab the firefly. And that is good. Stand back in the log. Repair it. Head to the right. Nice. So we're going to come up to a block now, just push this all the way down, all the way to the right until you get to the end. You can jump up and grab Firefly number five. Help. Yeah, Lump, you made a fire, bro. Get, get rid of some of this forest. Though then again, I'd be arrested for arson, I expect, so probably don't do that. Uh, don't jump off down the cliff like I did there, because death will appear upon you. We're going to break the log and we're going to go up. So we're going to repair it now. Yes. 
So we're going to climb up this rope now. We're going to crouch down here, climb up the rope, but do not go all the way to the right just yet. When we get onto the top of the log, we are going to break it, and there's going to be another missable, very easy to miss firefly just on the bottom right there. So break it when we're on top of the log, go down, grab the firefly, then we can jump up, repair, and carry on. That should be number six out of 20. Grace couldn't help but smile at lump silliness. Her fiery friend was finding a place near and dear to her heart. Suddenly, a strange sweet scent filled the air. Lump noses that smell. What is it, Lump? Looks like some kind of fruit. A fruit? Yum, yum. Lump love fruit. We need to go. Shadows deepened in the ravaged forest. Hi, yeah, we love the fruit. Anyway, there's going to be an unmissable firefly right here, so make sure to grab that. Number seven. Dragon fire. It's here. Yes, yes. Dra Jump up on El Logo, repair the boy, and then grab firefly number eight. Okay. Lump trust, Grace. Us chase dragon. Whee! That's the spirit, Lump. We're near. I can feel it. Yes! Um, a deep rift yawned before the- So, we need to break this next log first. We're not going to jump down because that still will result in big painful death, baby. And then basically what we could do, there's a fruit that has been revealed. What's going to happen is Lump is going to go over to it and then the new word and new game mechanic ability swap. Uh, will appear. All we need to do then is just drag the word swap over to lamp. We swap positions. Job done. We can carry on. How fantastic! Busy. Grace felt her resolve melt. I need to find the dragon. I promised Elder Ava. Just what am I doing out here? All by myself? Silly human, lump not left is in fruit. <laughs> Thanks, lump. Grace knew she wouldn't swap that little ball of fire for anything. Wow, <laughs> you okay, lump? Little dizzy for good. And this is what we're going to do just for the next sort of minute or so, uh, just to get used to the mechanic. So again, every time. Lump sees a fruit, he sort of takes a pretend bite because he's fire and would burn it to death. Use the word swap on it, we can then carry on. Make sure to grab firefly number, um, whatever this is, to the right of us just there before we do the swap. Well, you can jump back down, but just make sure to grab that firefly there. That should be 9 out of 20, sorry. <laughs> and then we can swap and carry on. Again, that one's a very easily missable one. Push the block to the right, climb up on the vine, that should be 10 out of 20 fireflies, unmissable this. And we're just going to do it again until we get all the way up the tree trunk. So, Lump is going to go up, to try and take a pretend bite, so just get the word swap ready so you can jump up. Same with the left hand side, and then same with the right, so just drag the word swap over to him. We're going to swap over. Job is a good one. Remember to grab Firefly number 11 out of 20 at the top here before climbing down the vine. Not Jeremy Vine. Nobody wants to climb down with Jeremy Vine. Blech. And only British people, I think, will really get who that is. Radio 2. Douche. Anyway, jump down to the left, and that is going to be number 12 out of 20. That uh, missable Firefly. And then we can swap once again to move on. My head's spinning. This may be better than fruit. There was no doubt. Something strong. 
and very, very... So in a little tiny pit right here, there's Firefly number 13, so don't jump over it just in case you miss him. <laughs> with little thought for her own safety. You won't get away from me again. I won't let you. Ah, no. Come back. Come back here. Oh, it's okay. It heard you. What? Far above, the dragon circled and dove, falling fast. As the waters calmed, Grace realized the dragon had gone far, far below. No! I... I... Her hope was shattered. I can't... It's okay, human. We find Dragon again. Have another go, right? Okay, lump help. But how? Most of the pieces are gone. I can't even fix it. Look! You get on this, okay? And then jump on the raft to the right. Now again, you know, I know Grace could have easily taken out this dragon. But then she took an arrow to the knee again. My goddamn knees! I don't even know where I'm going anymore. What am I doing? I'm such an idiot. What did I think I was going to do if I caught it? You tried, though, human. That's important. Look! One of them's little glowy things you like. So we've got another unmissable firefly there. That is 16 out of 20. Uh, 14 out of 20, sorry. So I'm getting too ahead of myself. But there will be, at the end of this little platforming section, another unmissable one for 15. So just keep on slamming to the right as per the usual. So we're going to get to this little section here, smash through the dialogue as I do, and then just make sure to run to the right for another missable firefly. Again, that one is very easily forgotten. Don't break the rocks or anything, just grab this firefly first. That should be number 16 out of 20. So then what we can do is break this little tree stump here, and we're going to uh, interact with the uh, wood. So we can grab a little bit of wood in our pocket. Which a lot of males tend to do in the morning. Anyway, so then we can break the rocks. We're going to jump down. Break the next rock to the right. Climb under. And this should be yet another missable firefly for us to grab. So again, very easy those uh, last two missables there. But... You should be on 17 out of 20. We can now go back up and then head to the left a little bit. Make sure to rise. Get your rock out. Rise it. Don't repair it because it needs rising. Head to the left a little bit and there's going to be two big boy merchants that are going to appear. Okay. Ancient energy stirred. Reaching into the place beyond. Ah. 
So you think that you may have to do some puzzles or something here, but that's literally not it. What we're going to do is uh, talk to the left merchant first. Now, we can again slam through the dialogue and he's going to ask us a couple of questions or whatever. Again, the answers do not matter. So you can literally choose whatever you want you want. The only thing that's going to change with both merchants is a bit of the dialogue. So literally go to each one. Choose whatever you want, and then Lumpy's going to do something solid for us. Cheers, big Lumpy boy, as you will see. It was the last a what? A, a crack and a spark, and the pendant was gone in the flames. Go. Jumped into the fire, the flames began to burn, larger and brighter. Grace felt a change come over her. Slits opened in her neck. Gills! She could now breathe underwater. The wish has been granted. Time for us to go. Hope you like your gift. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. I'll never forget what you did. So we finally get a friend in this goddamn thing for the dragon, goddamn quest for the dragon, and Lump basically kills himself to give us gills. <laughs> nice, now we can breathe out of water. Now to the left here, the screen's going to go slowly, but there is a firefly, as you can just see there. It's pretty much unmissable, but the screen moves very slowly, so that'll be 18. And then we'll have 19 and 20, basically in a row, unmissable, just before we get into the water, so... Who knew that a big lump of fire would sacrifice itself to give us gills so we're able to breathe underwater? Man, that is that is some good storytelling right there. So there are last two. Make sure to grab them, head into the water, and that is that chapter finished with. Schnoich. But welcome to the saddest journal in the entire game. And this is one that will hit many people right in the fields, as it did me as well. Goddamn emotions! Mum got the call a few hours ago. She's still crying. I just feel... Numb. I 
tried to go back to sleep. This is where genuinely the brilliant storytelling and brilliant writing really, really does come into play. Again, hits so many people in the fields. Um, but with this one then, basically all we're doing is lining up the words to say we should have been there. Which is another one that will really wrangle on some people. It did me as well when my grandpa passed away as well. I wasn't there and god damn did I feel guilty at that. But put the words, we should have been there. Should have been there. We drove to the hospital first thing in the morning. So this is the page then that we're going to be getting the last few black asterisks. So remember the ones that we got before for the achievement, um, up to seven. And this is where we're going to be grabbing the last two. So jump on these telephone wires after you jump on the keyword forever. And it's basically going to be just in front of us. So they're pretty unmissable, but if you're not paying attention, jumping too much, you may actually miss one. So just pay attention. Just keep on walking. There's the first one. Bop. Grab that boy. And then the next one that we should grab should be coming up very soon. And that will get us the next achievement. There it is. Just in view. Bam. Okay, so actually maybe I think in with it we need one more. Um, <laughs> after this. There it is. Sorry. Three on this page. Not two. My bad. So that should be the one. But since it's not, we've actually got one more to grab. I'm so sorry. I genuinely thought there was two on this page. But there is another. So there's four black asterisks on this page. Don't. Just do not forget to grab them all. And now that should unlock. Apologies for misleading you then, guys. But there is four on there. So it would have been three on the, the page earlier on. Four on this page. Job done. That should be that. Up the stairs to room 305. Grand's room. Mum gently put her hand on my back and asked me if I wanted to wait outside. I said, Yes. Hello again, journal. I'm sitting in the waiting room. Just rows of plastic benches in a sea of blue linoleum. And it smells like Ben's bottom. Next for this bit then, we're going to grab the word doodling right there. And then we're just going to put it all on the left hand side. Of course, having to hold in the right trigger um, until the picture appears. Dad's calling me. Dad had his arm round Mum as they came out of Gran's room. I have never seen her like this. Mums aren't supposed to cry. They're strong. They're meant to know what to do. Always. I guess losing your own mum makes you feel like a kid again. The drive home was a quiet one again. It's silly, but I keep thinking back to Gran's favourite vase, the one Grandad gave her. I was running in the house. Even though Gran had told me not to. I still remember the noise. Of the vase smashing. Into little pieces. Gran was there in an instant. I waited for her to shout. She didn't. She just looked sad. And somehow? That was worse. Gran wouldn't let me pick up pieces. She found every 
single. I think this is a, a, another brilliant example of how different people react. Where usually, you know, a, a, a lot of men are seen to just sort of, you know, be the strong one, and the women are the very emotional ones. But just loads of people just react so differently. Um, this one's very easy. We're just putting the pieces of vase back together. Pieces should be very easy here, but it does capture the emotions just brilliantly just absolutely brilliantly of that case of that that feeling of helplessness that feeling of where the hell do we go from here what do we do now but you know incredibly time time is a healer and you do and you will get better even if it is just a little bit you do do get better but it is that time and, and again the writers of this game capture it so brilliantly where it's that sort of helplessness of what do I do now and where the bloody hell do I go from here? Which got me in the bloody fields as well. Genuinely teared up as well. So anyway, we are basically coming close to the end where we can continue chapter 6. So Gran always says, We can't hold on to things forever. Let them live in your memories. So we can't hold on to things forever. Let them live in your memories. That's some very goddamn good advice there, Mrs. Gran. We can't hold on to things forever. Let them live in your memories. She said she preferred to keep the vase like she remembered it. Maybe I hurt Gran's heart. Weakened it. That can happen, can't it? Maybe this is all my fault. I should have listened to her. I shouldn't have run in the house. Now everything is broken. If I'd started my story sooner, Gran could have read it. It might have helped. I could... Next puzzle then, just like the, the puzzle that we did with the bars, we need to do with the hearts now, so just um, put the puzzle pieces where they're meant to go. Uh, in a love heart shape. It's very easy. You, everyone should know what a heart looks like. And I'm sorry if you don't. I'm sorry if you haven't got a heart and you don't know what one looks like, then... Well, here it is, just for you. <laughs> really? I don't even know how to fix my story. It's a mess. I left Grace to sink into cold, dark waters. She's completely alone. She left behind Lump. Again, we got a little bit of dialogue on the right-hand side. You can pick any option. Again, all it does is change what Grace says. But I choose ambivalent because it looks like a very cool word. Although, to be fair, I think guilty is one that resonates with a lot of people. Even though it is generally never their fault. A lot of people always feel guilty. I felt exactly the same. It's, it's nuts. It's absolutely mad how a tragedy such as this does make you feel. And it always makes you feel guilty for whatever reason. You could be thinking of a memory from 20 years ago. You feel guilty. I should have done this or shouldn't have done that. The truth is, it's never your fault. Unless you actually killed them yourself, then it is your fault. But in terms of, you know, passing on like this, it's never your fault. So never ever feel guilty about it. But we are now coming up to the next main stage of the game. Chapter 6. This feels so... strange. Wish Lump could have been here. There was nothing I could have done. Was there? But there was no time to dwell on her lost friend. Grace had a dragon to find. And this is definitely one of the more sort of confusing areas in the game, just in terms of the collectibles. Uh, the fireflies are a little bit, a little bit trickier, shall we say, to find. Um, but they're not too bad. They're still in sort of plain view, but it's kind of like a maze, this whole level. So follow along with exactly what I do and you should be fine, just fine. Thin, just thin. So, a dead end, but of course it's not a dead end, because I wouldn't let you do that. We're going to uh, break the uh, rocks at the top there, 
And then we're going to raise ourselves up. So get the raise word out, put it under you, and then make yourself raise. <laughs> that can mean two things. Grab the firefly there, the first one out of 20, and then you've got a firefly either side. So, of course, we're going to go with the left one first, and then grab the right one. just don't know. I wish I could ask Lump, but there was no Lump there. No annoying little Lump to complain. No charming Lump to ask for advice either. The submerged tunnel... So this is where it can get slightly confusing then, so I'm gonna walk to the right just a little bit just to get the uh, writing started, and then head to the left, and then the final sort of way up is where we're going to go, so rise yourself. And then there's going to be the fourth firefly, so make sure to grab that. And then we can just head to the right and go back down. Then from here we're going to head to the right, go past this opening and stop at this opening. And we're going to head up and grab the next firefly. It's a maze of crappy materials, really, but it is what it is. It's what we have to do. So we're going to head back down, and this time we're going to head to the right and down. And then just go to the left and go all the way. We're going to get the, the next firefly, and then we're going to rise ourselves rotten. Now, what we need to do, it's kind of tricky to control, but we just need to go across to the other side. So don't bother falling down. Um, it can be kind of tricky to control you having to use the left stick and right stick at the same time, but yeah, you'll get used to it. You're awesome at gaming, right? So there's the next Firefly. That should be number 7 out of 20. And then we're going to rise ourselves up to the left. And to the left and up here, this is where number 8 is. Again, a lot of easily missable ones in this chapter. So now we're going to go back the way that we came. Now I accidentally fall down the middle here, but this is not what we're meant to be doing. Just go straight over to the other side. So I accidentally do this. this is not what we needed to be doing. So please don't follow me. Don't be silly and follow silly old me. <laughs> Bending with almost malicious intent. That sounds very much Benderish from Futurama, does it not? Anyway, head to the rightmost right that you can. Go on up. Go to the right, and that is where the next firefly is. Just up there, there we go. Make sure to grab it before heading on. But what you can do from here is just head down to the right, go all the way to the left, and there is going to be another firefly, basically in our way, there it is. So we're gonna be heading down anyway, so go down, 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 beep, 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 Raise yourself up to the sort of middle rock right there, or the middle platform. Again, try <laughs> try doing the best you can, moving your character and the word rise at the same time. You got this, girl. I believe in y'all. And then raise yourself to the other side once you've grow, uh, got that firefly. And now there's nothing else to do but dive down. Jump, jump, all the way down. Jump, jump, all the way down. No reason to gar, honey. No reason to gar. She found herself amidst a great coral bed. Shimmering with colour and life. So then this next bit is very important. There are actually some collectibles that we can miss. And what we have to do is basically break coral to go down further. So grab the firefly there. But what I would do is keep your the break, the word break, I would keep that above you. Very important to keep it above you. And just be very careful to go down. So as you can see, on the right here is the firefly. Now if you'd have done that below you and you would have gone down it, you would have missed it. 
Um, but if you do end up missing one, um, just quickly reload a checkpoint dashboard, reload a checkpoint, and then go ahead and do it. Um, go ahead and reload into it, you should be fine then. So now you should be on 14 out of 20. Make sure to, um, at this point, stay to the left as much as you can. So we can break these next two, but make sure to stay to the left. As soon as we get past these bits of coral right here, we're going to end up on another ledge. You can just see it there. So make sure to break that. And then what we need to do, we're going to be jumping Im immediately to the right. So as soon as from here, just make a big jump all the way to the right as much as you can. Put the brake sort of bottom right corner. There you go. You'll be able to see it. And there we go then. So that should be 16 out of 20 now. So that bit can be a little bit tricky, can be a little bit confusing, but hopefully you managed to get all the fireflies. Again, reload the checkpoint straight away if you did end up missing one. Otherwise, for now, just keep on floating down. Water on her chest. Her thoughts had only one way to go. Inwards. What am I doing? I let Lump sacrifice herself for me. And for what? I don't even know where the dragon is, or where I am. I'm falling. I'm failing. Eldereva. The village. Lump. All of them. Huh? What? And as soon as we land, head immediately to the left. Left, 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 left. But apparently we can breathe. The deeper we go into water, the more we can breathe. Who knew? Uh, but there is that missable firefly. That should be number 17 out of 20 for you now. Um, but yeah. So if you want to try that, um, just... All you have to do is get a little fire thing... Get him sacrificed to two big merchants so you can breathe underwater and then the further you go down then you won't need them anymore So that's all you need to do to be able to breathe underwater very very easy So we've only got one uh, Word left and that is repair so for the next sort of minute or so what we'll be doing is repairing the bridges Walking across the bridge and grabbing the fireflies on the way so they're very obviously spotted So just keep repairing and picking up fireflies along the way Easy, Red. Get to the dragon. No matter what. There was just the way forward. Barred by an indestructible metal door. No! I need to... Need to... Find... The dragon. Right, so we've got a new word we're going to get now, and the word is called ignore. Now, I know a lot of people would love this word and this magic power in real life. I know a lot of us would. Uh, but since we don't, we can only use it in the game. Use it to ignore the sort of shield there. And just continue on to the right for now. It. The dragon. No matter what. No matter what. The Seekin seemed friendly. Hey. Have you seen the dragon? Wait. And now we've got these weird little things. These basically are called Seekins, which basically they must have ripped it off some kind of... They've got it off a Pokemon game, definitely. But that's fine. Um, so what they all, they all want to have a little chat, but what we can do is just ignore them. So grab the word ignore, put them on the Seekins. Seekin, I choose you. Here you go. And then we can ignore them, ignore this big shield. So any kind of big things, um, big groups of Seekins, we can just ignore. Get straight through. Would it just been easier to just go straight around them? But that's okay as well. So just ignore everything in your path, like the um, very nice, happy person that you are, Grace. 
Disgusting! Freezing cold blanketed Grace. There was comfort in its numbing embrace. She wished she could stay. She did this. Is this my fault? It was her fault. The home. I... I destroyed it. Yes, Grace, you did do this, so congratulations, you've just destroyed the whole Seekins world. Uh, but there is a missable achievement that we're going to get now, and you're going to see all the Seekins are frozen over. Now, we need to knock over every single one, and it's not as hard as you may imagine, um, as it, or as it may sound. So there they are, they're all frozen here, there's only one place that we can probably miss them, but there's a firefly that they're next to, and it is this bit coming up. On top of this hill, just on top of this ledge, you can see the Firefly and a couple more Seekins to knock over. So just make sure to knock over every single one. And grab the 19th Firefly, and here's number 20. And now we've only got one more level in which to get all the Fireflies before that is finally done. Otherwise, the rest of the Seekins are pretty much just in our way. Uh, get the Ignore button out, get rid of this shield, this weird sort of Thor bridge. Um... <laughs> Asgard Bridge, I mean not Thor Bridge, Asgard Bridge Looking shield And now this bit, again it's very easy but we cannot stop for anything So literally keep your finger on the right, tur or turning right at least And he shouldn't be able to catch you But if you do stop at any point for anyone or anything Even for just a second, the dog will catch you, Guilt will catch you And he'll tear your butthole to pieces and the rest of you, I assume, as well. <laughs> so even when we uh, stop for a cutscene, keep your finger pointing to the right at all times. And by the way, here you should get the No Remorse achievement for knocking all of the Frozen Sea Kids over. Well done, Grace. Ruining lives. Keep going, Grace. Keep going. So yes, so even with this cutscene here, the dog is going to jump down, we're going to move forward a little bit before Grace collapses. Again, always keep your finger moving to the right as we've been doing, we're going to get up sort of one dialogue option again. The uh, option does not matter, but as soon as you make that choice, keep your finger moving to the right, because if you're a little bit late, a second too late, we're going to die, and then you've got to do it all over again. And uh, nobody wants that, do they? So, just keep sure, to make sure to keep going. Go, 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 go! You'll make me disappear into nothingness. I can't let that happen. Would Grace embrace her guilt? Or run from it?
And there we go then, that is chapter 6 finished, and now we've only got two chapters. Chapter 7 is very short, with no collectibles. Chapter 8 is a little bit longer, with 40 collectibles of the Fireflies. But again, it's not too bad. So we are about an hour away from finishing the game. So it's not too bad, but again, we've got about 10 minutes of these journal pages. And this time, our female uh, companion right here, Izzy, is sort of like... <laughs> Bruh, I don't know what to write. My life's a mess right now, and that is sad. Stranger, I've been thinking a lot. And we're back. Um, but again, like I said, any time a page is just jumping on the keywords, I won't be speaking as it is literally just yeah, right. speaking, uh, jumping on the keywords of the purple writing. That's about it. A writer who can't even write. Okay, find something simple to start with. What did I do today? Today I got up. I had breakfast. I tried watching the telly. That's it. I'm going back to bed. Hi, journal. Another day. Each time I wake up for the tiniest of moments. So this one's very easy. All we're doing is just dragging word by word to uh, spell out or say the phrase, it isn't true. But the words only come up one by one anyway, so cheesy easy enough. True. But then it all comes rushing back. It is true. Looking around my room. Everything reminds me of Gran. Her puzzle box gift from last year. The magic tank we made during the holiday. Our yogurt pot robot. These paints Gran gave me. This pen. Even you, Journal. So the page is just about to go into grey now, so the keywords, as you can see there, uh, she's everywhere, that's one of the keywords. You can still probably just make it out, um, but just in case, I will tell you these keywords just as they're sort of greyed out. So, Ben's birthday, and then cake, we're going to step on, and then the word underneath. And then the next word underneath that. So yeah, you can still probably just make it out anyway, as the sort of, sort of purple writing-ish. Nothing. Everything does. Mum said we need to send out invitations to the funeral. How can she think about that? All we're doing for this one then is grabbing the word shove and then we're just going to put it all over the drawing um, basically until the drawing's gone and the um, flappo beanie opens up.
Then I stormed off into my room. Later, Dad came up for some well-meant dad talk. I know you're sad, but it will get better. You'll see. Just give it time. I know he wanted to cheer me up, but... So now we need to grab the word wrong, which appears, and then put it over the three speech bubbles until they all turn black and the dialogue changes. Flapo opens up, but we're gonna go head first, deep, straight inside. <laughs> the world feels very dark now. Next one, we're coming up with a legendary granny phrase saying, this time it's always darkest before the dawn. It's always darkest before the dawn. Not it's darkest dawn before the always, because that would make no sense. It's always darkest before the dawn. And, uh, no, uh, yeah, that's what she would have said. So now you've got to drag the word said up to where gran always said, which is extremely sad. Extremely sad, really. I keep thinking about all the things Gran won't get to see. So this is another easy one as well. What we need to do is drag the word will, or we, sorry, and then drag the word won't. And we just need to do that for the next couple of dialogue options uh, that comes out. So get rid of the word will. So just, just drag it away. Go on. Go on, son. Drag it away. And then the word won't appear, so you just keep doing that until Flappo Beanie opens up again. Be there. If I get married, she won't be there. Even if that's unlikely because... Boys. I prefer cats. And it's stuff like this which makes it even harder when you realise that people won't be there for certain things. It hits, it, it just hits you for absolute six. Stuff like that. It, you know, it's already upsetting enough as it is, but then you're thinking, you won't be there to see me get married, you won't be there to meet my grandkids, etc. It's, it's, a, hard, it's a very hard one to swallow, but again, the writing has got, the, the guys and gals writing on this got it down absolutely perfect and now the color has come back because as they say you know uh, your mood changes when a cat appears or something or other you know you're happy i don't know cats do something good i don't really like cats i'm sorry I, <laughs> please please forgive me i don't really like cats but they cheer people up so they are good for something so drag mr kitty drag him over to your side of the bed right there and that's nice that's a little bit happier I'm allergic to cats, by the way, and that's why I don't like them. And they scram you when they've got spiky penises and stuff, and... Well, no point having a spiky penis. Anyway, we are coming up now to <laughs> Chapter 7. We're going to start it. Here we go, jump in. And <laughs> this one is... <laughs> what am I on about? And this one is the easiest chapter in the game. There's not a lot we're going to be doing. Basically, what we're going to be doing for the first couple of minutes is just going through dialogue and we're going to be walking to the right and we're going to be walking to the right three times so basically we, we'll walk once and then we'll come back to this bit walk again come back to this bit and then the third time we get a little surprise so just keep walking to the right for now until you're not having to walk right anymore and you'll see exactly what i mean she kept moving then surely a solution would present itself is someone here anyone in the emptiness around her, she found a hut, a palace, hope. I... I don't know what comes next. It's so cold here. So empty. Just nothingness. I can't... 
can't find, can't find the words. I'm never going to find the dragon. Or the fireflies. They won't come. The words just won't come anymore. I don't know where I am, how to get out, or even where I'm going. Pointless. What kind of writer can't find the words? Let's try this again. Grace awoke under an old tree in an unfamiliar land. I don't know if I can do this anymore. She walked boldly ahead, a spring in her step. I'm so tired. Grace knew she just had to keep going. What's the point? Put one foot in front of the other. I've failed. It's over. Whilst she still had breath left in her body, there was still hope. This, this is, is all, all my, my fault. fault. I, should I should just, just stop. stop. Yeah, so if it wasn't fairly obvious then we've got like, is this a whale or like a, it kind of looks like a tiger shark or something. But anyway, what, what he doesn't do is eat the crap out of us. So we can just blast through the dialogue once again. This is one of the um, better bits for blasting through dialogue. And basically what's going to happen is we're going to go through this again a couple of times. Whatever you pick, it doesn't matter. There may be different dialogue to you on screen than it is on mine. Again, it literally does not matter. Because what we're going to do is just pick one bubble, go through the dialogue, go through it again, pick the next bubble, and then the next bubble, etc. Until the whale slash tiger shark slash, I don't know, you got some spots on your back there, bro, kind of fish boy, drops us off. But you just need to keep walking to the right a little bit just to um, get the dialogue kicked off. I feel... It... But... It... You... My... That... What... This is where I leave. But... I... You're... Can... 
For the love of God, when the cutscene ends, do not jump to the left. If you jump to the left, you'll die and you'll have to replay that whole entire section again. So for the love of God, keep walking to the right. If you jump to the left, you have to do that yourself. I pre-warned you, so if you do that, I'm sorry, but that's not my fault this time. I'm so sorry. But we are just going to keep on jumping to the right. The end of the chapter is basically nigh. In fact, nigh it is. Hello, journal. So we begin chapter 8 and really, really, uh, this is just talking about the funeral and everything and everyone's feelings after it. Just just enjoy this last, last entry. Honestly, I just couldn't get enough of the whole game, in all fairness. So, so good. Written so perfectly as well. Um, but we're just going to take a look through the door here. We're going to have another granny section, a granny says section. And colour is the music of nature, as soon as we get into it. And really, to be honest, this is what I want as well. You know, your grand's always like, no, I don't want black. I'd want that as well. At my funeral, I want people to be in, like, rainbow colours. I want it to be drinking through, like, straw willies and stuff like that. You know they do a, a hen do's and stuff? Um, colour is the music of nature, though. That's what we're going through first. <laughs> So make sure to put that one in. But yeah, that's what I want at my funeral. None of this depressing crap. I literally want, you know, people smacking each other with rubber dildos and stuff. I don't know, make it fun. Probably, if I go before my nan, mind, don't slap my nan with a dildo, please. Please, that would just be insane. Hilarious, but insane. Anyway, we can open the wardrobes. We need to move the black dresses out of the way. <laughs> Can't believe I just said that on a video. That's fine. Move the black dresses out of the way, though. We're going to grab this nice, pretty, flowery dress. That's that's pre pretty. Nice and cheery. Yum yums. Perfect. Still can't believe I said what I just said. Please ignore that. Thanks very much. Real garden. The sun was shining. The birds were singing. It was like, they didn't know. The vicar had just started talking when Uncle Alan stepped into the fish pond. I couldn't help but imagine Cran caring more about the fish than Uncle Alan. Pictures stuck in my head. Cran running to the drenched Uncle Alan, grumbling at him for frightening the fish. It was too much. The laughter bubbled up inside me. Dad tried to look annoyed. <laughs> After the vicar finally finished droning on, we started the singing. All things bright and beautiful. <laughs> Ben started wailing. No, howling. Dad took him out. Well played, Ben. Laughing felt much better than crying. The wake was at our place. There were so many people. I didn't know most of them. Everyone said how sorry they were. How Gran was. Such a wonderful lady. I wish she could have heard them. Really is such a beautiful ending when it comes to stuff like this. And you don't never realise how just how loved some people actually are until something like this happens. Anyway, with this next bit, grab the word story and there's going to be three or four different uh, empty photographs we just need to um, basically colour in. 
until old Flappo opens up for us again. Or how she decorated Mum's room like an underwater kingdom, so she could feel like a mermaid. That's so like her. One old lady told me how they used to bunk off work and go to the Glastonbury Music Festival. Another of her friends said Gran once got arrested while protesting whaling. I expected this day to be terrible, Journal, and it was, but I didn't expect to smile or laugh, to be surprised, to feel happy that people loved Gran like I did. Each time I heard a story about Gran, I could imagine her laughing along with it. It was like she was there with me, helping me through it. It is true what they say, laughter is the best medicine. Time's a good healer, but laughter is the best medicine. And ain't that the bloody truth? Anyway, what we need to be doing is just putting Izzy basically back together now. So put her head together, her feet, her whole body. Just put them all back together until she feels whole again. Okay. Which is a nice ending. After all that's happened. It should be. I don't know what happens after we die, but I think I know where we go, into all the people who have ever cared about us. We make a sort of place for them in our hearts. I need to finish Grace's story. Gran would want me to. I want me to. I think I know what to do now. Let's summarize. After the dragon attacked her village, the kind Grace set out to return the fireflies. On her travels, she met a grumpy djinn guarding a fallen city of philosophers. And found a lonely fire creature named Lump. They became friends. But then, Lump needed to stay behind with the ancient ones in exchange for the gift of water breathing. Deep under the water, inside the lost Seekin Palace, chased by the shadow of remorse, Grace had her big moment of doubt, but she pulled through it all. And now, she is ready to face the dragon. And here we go then, this is the final, final chapter of the game. We've got about 20, 25 minutes left of this chapter now. It's not too bad, but there are 40 fireflies, so just make sure um, 
lovely to be uh, following as you've been doing so far. Hopefully, we'll get all 40 and get the achievement for collecting every firefly in the end as well. So get yourself out of the snow, big snow drift that you and uh, Doggy Dog, Guilty Dog, had just put ourselves into. And then we can continue to the right, where we're going to find our first firefly basically immediately after we repair the bridge. So now we, get, we should also get an achievement as well. Story related, can't be missed. We've basically got um, every word going, which is going to come in handy, obviously, in this chapter. Because that's basically what video games do, right? Always gives it, it always gives you the best powers at the very end. So we need to rise up Rocky again, and this is where we are going to get our first Firefly. And then just keep on going and jump to the right. Light as a feather. So now we need to repair the block that we just broke. Give that a little pushy, pushy, push, push to the right, and there's Firefly number two. Like cutting through. Now we need to be breaking up blockiness right here. So give it a, a good shove twice, and then we can just climb up on these beautiful long tongues or whatever the hell they are, and grab Firefly number three while we're there. Now we can actually just drop down immediately downwards. Uh, so if you land on this rock here, just keep going down for a minute because this is where we can get another two fireflies. Fly, Firefly 4, rise up a little bit until we get to a opening on the right. And then that should be Firefly number 5 before heading up the rock and back to the right again. Another tiny, easy platforming section. We just need to jump on the rocks. Um, so don't head straight down because you'll die. But there are two rocks we're going to jump on. And make sure to grab the two fireflies as well. So that'll be six and seven out of 40 for the road. For the road ahead. Break the block. A tall tower loomed overhead. Many moons. Go ahead, rise the gate. Rise, young one. Rise. Head to the right. Now, this is another missable achievement that we can get. What you need to get is the word burn. And we need to light every single candle in this place. So if you keep it sort of in the middle of the screen, you can see where the candles are anyway. There's, there's about ooh, six or seven in this little area. Um, but if you just keep it sort of in the middle of the screen where I do, uh, th they come up as a purple glow anyway. So they're quite hard to miss, but I keep it there just to be safe and so uh, just to be safer than sorry. Always worth doing. Rise up this gate right here. But yeah, so we need to be burning every single candle on the way. Not too difficult at all. Again, like I said, because they glow up even in the dark, they are uh, quite hard to miss. So let's go ahead now repair all of these steps, but of course before moving on we need to crawl underneath them and grab our next firefly uh, just underneath the stairs there. Then we can head back out and head on up. Again, remember to make sure to burn every candle that we come across. So there's going to be four on this uh, the stairs area, the one uh, down here. There'll be another one just as we go on top, and there should be another two right at the very top. There's one, and there's t'other one. Booerns. Rise the gate. Were you saying burns or booerns? I was saying booerns. Anyway, just keep going uh, to the left, and basically there's going to be a statue on the floor that we need to repair. So, whip out your repair spell and get that crap repaired. Very small statue considering what it's on. Let's 
So this little scene goes on for about a minute or so, so just get your swap um, word out and just keep it on the statue because we will, as, as soon as you put the swap on the statue, that's what we'll be doing. Just to get up to where the statue is and we'll be able to collect the next firefly and rise ourselves out of here. Unbowed. Defiant. It drew her to it. Her foe rose before her. No breath in its body, but no less terrifying. Let's hope I'm up to the task. So there you go, then we should have 10, and we've got another 3 candles to burn, so make sure to burn them. And there will be 2 fireflies in this room, so you should now be on 12 out of 40. And there's a couple of candles, again, there'll be 2 in each room, but we need to swap with the statue, um, which is on the right hand side there. Uh, burn the candle up above. And the one on the left if you want as well, but we need to come to that later on anyway. Grab Firefly number 13 on the ground there before doing the swap with the statue. You can still get it after, but better to get it now. And there will be number 14 um, Firefly, so you should now be on 14 out of 40. Press B and the left stick to get rid of the key. And now what we can do is basically just swap. As long as you've got the two fireflies and the two candles burning, you can now swap yourself with the statue in the main room to get back into the main room, the sort of middle room there. And now we need to do it for the other side as well. So there'll be two candles once again to burn. Um, uh, this time we'll just swap with the statue and then the next candle should appear. There it is. So that's two in there as well. Rise yourself up. And again, we'll be grabbing what is number 15 out of 40 now for the fireflies. And then once again, pull the key out. And then that should be the end of this tiny little section ride. Meow. That's it. A gust of fresh air rewarded Grace's efforts. So again, swap with the statue in the main room, and then we're going to climb up. Anyway, it's all good, but remember to keep your burn out. The word burn, and there's going to be another firefly on the way. As well as a couple more candles to burn. Oh, in fact, that would be the last one then. So, so as long as you um, followed exactly as I did, you should get the achievement right there. If you didn't, I'm not sure if you can. I don't think you can go back down. So you might just have to replay the chapter up again until this point. Which is a shame and I apologise for. But... That'll be okay, it doesn't take, too, it shouldn't take too long, it shouldn't take more than 10 minutes to get back to that point. But hopefully you've got it the same time I did. And just enjoy whatever the hell is going on now. Spooky. And claw. In its fire-wreathed home. Waiting. So very important here, when we get to the top of the edge, do not just jump straight down. Just walk carefully off the edge, as you can see. There is Firefly number 17, I believe. Yes, so Firefly number 17. So if you just jump straight off again, you'll just have to reload the checkpoint and just grab that Firefly again. Uh, but no biggie again, you should be fine. And generally, if I was sliding for this long, I'd be on my face right now. In fact, my face would be sort of at my butt sack, to be honest. But there we go. Grace is obviously a, a lot better at sliding down dangerous uh, hills than I am. And I would have definitely broken my uh, ass bone right there. 
so uh, you should have got now 18, and there should be 19 out of 40. The, the two um, unmissable ones there. And again, my, my nut sacks would have been in my mouth at that point. So, Grace, you've got some skills, girl. God damn, you got some skills. For the first time. So, what we can do with the lava, we can just ignore it. Man, if it was that easy to just get rid of dangerous things in the world, that would be awesome. <laughs> Make sure to grab Firefly number 20 out of 40. So, we're halfway there now and halfway to getting the achievement. Again, ignore the lava. Make sure to grab Firefly number 21. Slow her down. I laugh in the face of lava. Rise up, your rock, get your rock out, and make it rise for Firefly number 22. <laughs> and when we finally get to the top and go to the right, there's going to be Firefly number 23. Now, you should be able to just... Um, Jump straight down, but keep yourself to the left as best you can to uh, fall on the platform below. In its stead, a cold dread crept up her spine. So jump across. We're going to climb up on the vine, but make sure to climb all the way to the top. As you'll see on a tree branch to your left at the top is an easily, again, missable firefly. Which should be number 20... What's that? Number 24 now out of 40. So we're getting close. We're getting close. Jump off to the right, and we're going to be rising again. Try to actually jump on the rock before you rise, otherwise you ain't getting on it. <laughs> rise yourself, beautiful, rise. And there's going to be Firefly number 25. Jump on the platform, keep going right. It's like my village, but it can't be. It's a trick. It has to be. An eerily familiar sight awaited her. That's my house. How? Elder Ava! No! Wait! Come back! Oh, no! No, no! Bruh, the dragon is just messing with you now. That ain't no good. So we're heading to the left, we're gonna jump up on a chain, which is going to give us our next fire flight, but again, we need to climb all the way to the top, so don't jump to the left yet. Climb all the way to the top, and Firefly number 27 is going to be up there as well. And then we can jump to the left without breaking our legs. It's like magic. And again, we're going to jump on a ch uh, onto a chain on our left, which is going to get the next... Firefly, and once again, you're going to climb all the way to the top, so do not jump left right here. Climb all the way to the top, and that should get Firefly number 29. So now we've only got 11 left to do. Well, technically 10, but I'll explain that when we get to it. So, now the dragon's seriously messing with us, but we've got a Firefly directly up ahead. Now we're sort of in the weird swimming section again. Basically what it is, we're going through kind of all of the levels in tiny little sections, which is all good. Um, but and for some reason I completely forgot how to how to work the rise button and how to actually control it. It's like go up a little bit, put the rise, put the word rise up a little bit, and then you should be good. For some reason I got completely <laughs> confused. Goddamn swimming bit. I do make it eventually. There we go. There we go. So I told you I make it eventually. So that's thirty-one out of forty. That should be. Keep going to the left. This is only, again, a very small section, just like the rest of the so-called chapters that we've already done. So just rise yourself up. Please try to do a better job than I did, because I made a hatch of this. <laughs> go to the left. Make sure to go to the left to grab Firefly number 32 before repairing the coral. Coral! And then grabbing number 33 on the right.
Now, and thankfully, we're out of the swimming section. Thankfully for me, because I made a complete hash of that, but that's all cute. So when we get onto this log, again, we're going to break it. And then we're going to grab Firefly number 34. And then we're going to repair this and head to the right. Now, for some reason, the game... I don't know why, but it, 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 it skips a collectible. And it skips a collectible for me here. So for there, it said 34. And as we climb up the vine right here, there's going to be another two collectibles. One at the very top and one on the left. Um, but for, it goes from 34 to 36. So I grab the um, collectible here. And I crapped my pants at this point because I thought I'd missed one somewhere. So we went from 34 to 36 to 37. So if it does, on this particular level anyway, skip one for you for whatever reason, literally don't panic. It just, I don't know why it does it, but it did it. So do not panic if it does actually skip one. It did for me. So again, just don't worry. You should still be golden nuggets, baby. I hope you find your peace too, Jin. Hey, Jin, where's rum? I'm thirsty. <laughs> that was crap. My bad, my bad. <laughs> so keep going to the right. We're running away from Jin. Jin's no good for us. Makes me feel like crap after a while. And then we're just going to break these little rocks again. Almost there. Chilling winds shook her to the bone. Still she climbed. Now we're coming up to a, a again. It's kind of hard slash easy to miss. It's a weird one, but it's on the left right here. So just break it twice, jump across, and then grab what is number thirty-eight. So we've got two left to grab now, but keep on climbing. Again, if this was me in real life, I'd, I'd have given up in chapter one, to be honest. But, <laughs> hey, that's just me. There's number 39, very unmissable at the top. One left. And she's very, very brave for a, uh, you know, cute English-sounding girl who's just about to come up against a, a dragon who literally breathes fire. Very calm, collected. I like him. Pushing against. Storm. And snow. Defiant. Unwavering. That's bold. That's where I last saw Lump. Hulman. Oh, How are you not? I'm ah. Sango. Have to Grace, but we'll all. Be there in the memory. I'll make sure to keep you there. Goodbye, little lump. Ah, uh, my little trouser lump. God, how I miss you. I miss you, Lumpius Maximus Reximus. Anyway, the last firefly is going to be up. Because we need to get on the rock as soon as this little cutscene ends. Rise the rock and the cutscene... Sorry, the Firefly, even, is going to be directly above us. 
So hopefully you would have got 40 out of 40, 20 out of 20 in all the other chapters. And hopefully then the achievement should unlock for you right here. Um, like I said, I've got individual timestamps in the comment section below. So you should be able to check which one you're missing. And just keep checking, have a look. you got individual timestamps. So there it is, to the right. Now that should be the achievement true guardian. You should also have it as well, hopefully you do. And thank God that we've got no more little pissing white little balls to collect. <laughs> white little balls. <laughs> right. This is it. Uh, hello. Bit of an anticlimax. When she first set out, Grace wanted to return the sacred fireflies to their rightful home. But now she realized that Regardless of how her adventure ended, the journey had forever changed her. Standing there, she felt... Battle ready. She had the fortitude to face whatever battles lay ahead. The words were at her command. She was powerful. She was ready. Come out! I am ready to face you in combat. Man, this girl has no fear. She's like a stubborn little girl that won't go away. Right, I'm here, I'm ready. Okay. Anyway, what we need to do, quickly get out your book, get the ignore, put it on the dragon. That will instantly put out his flames. Uh, it's, not, it's not a boss battle. It's kind of technically, supposedly is in the game, but it's not very hard. Uh, what he's going to do is break it, so he's like, you know, get out. Doesn't do a particularly good job. We can just rise ourselves up. And then during this next little cutscene, what we need to do is get the word ignore back out. So as soon as he starts breathing that really hideous blue fire, we can just ignore that. And apparently that works. Skyrim was doing it all wrong. All he needed was a little magic book with the word ignore in it. And you would have done the game in like half an hour. If you want to end this one... Yes. Very well. You may Again, for this next dialogue, it literally doesn't matter. You pick whatever the hell you want to pick. It's all going to end up with the same outcome. No. Please! I've overcome... I've had to... And what I... It, I... I... It, Some things are not to be changed. Not. What happened? It's all gone, I'm afraid. It can't be just gone. There was no... I feel like if... I... You ate... But... Come 
back! Unlucky mucker! You basically, the whole world's gone dead and flubbed it. So, it was worth a shot, Grace, but alas, it was a pretty pointless journey, apparently. So whip out your book right now, so get the left trigger, get your book out, that is what it's referring to. There was only one place left to look. After a while, it, it does tell you, come on now, think your book, you goddamn Id idiot. Which, I'm sorry, jeez, it got so pushy. And that's basically the end of the game, though. That is basically the end of the game. Now, very important, when... Obviously, we're going to go through this little journal section again, but very important, when the credits appear, do not skip them. You've got to watch the entire credits. It's about five to ten minutes long. Obviously, I don't show you throughout the whole video. Um... Uh, just after we do this little journal section, and all it basically is, is just colouring in the books. That's all we're doing. Grabbing the word new, grabbing every word, and then just making it so the pages are filled until Flappo Beanie opens up for us. Which it is, right there in the middle. Uh, but this is basically all we got to do, so I'll come back to you with the credits, but remember, do not skip the credits when we get there. Just don't do it. of sleep. A remembrance of home. found every single firefly there's still something missing hey you're still here firefly can you help that's it firefly now you're ready for a new story and i have to say goodbye too thank you firefly Let's see what adventures lie ahead. Hello, journal. Reading these dusty pages makes me feel old. I reread them so many times as a kid, taking myself back to those dark moments, reassuring myself it would all be okay. 
That helped. You helped. I still miss Gran every day. Sometimes I hear her laugh in the back of my mind. Abby reminds me of her. Insatiably curious and fiercely independent. I hope she never loses that. Mum's coming to live with us for a bit. I hope her and Abby are going to make some memories of their own. They're already both obsessed with cat videos and Instasnap. Abby's birthday is coming up. Maybe I'll get her a journal of her own. She says she wants to be a writer. Well, what can I say about that game other than clap, 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 bravo. Absolutely incredible, fantastic emotion, fantastic gameplay, stunning scenery, everything was just brilliant about this game. And I applaud everyone at Sketchbook Games and Modus Games for publishing it. But very well done to everyone at Sketchbook Games for creating such a, a genuine masterpiece. Absolutely fantastic in my eyes. So here we are then at the credits. Like I said, do not... Do not skip them. Um, and basically what you can do then, like we've been doing throughout the whole game with the diary pages, you can move your character all around if you want, or you can just leave it, but just make sure not to... Um, yeah, skip them, and you'll get the achievement then for not skipping the achievements at the very end. So, that is that then, guys and gals. So thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the game, and I hope the guide helped as well, and that we had some laughs along the way, as we always do. Don't forget, of course, to like, comment, subscribe, and share if the video did help and you did enjoy it. Uh, don't forget to check me out on all my socials, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, everything. Just check me out on them. I'm pretty entertaining now and again, I promise. Um, thank you to absolutely everyone who does support me on, the, uh, on Patreon. I absolutely appreciate it so, so much. But that is that then, guys and gals. I shall see you in the next one. Thank you very much again. See you in the next one then, baby. Big love you.